The OnePlus Nord series of phones have always offered very good value. The original OnePlus Nord really set and raised the bar for this segment and that was quickly followed by the OnePlus Nord 2 as well as the Nord CE or Core Edition which became the new entry point to the whole OnePlus user experience. Well this year OnePlus has a successor to the CE simply called the Nord CE2 and while it still has a very low entry price, there are a bunch of little improvements which hopefully should make the usage experience even better. Let's check it out. For a budget smartphone, the OnePlus Nord CE2 does come with a lot of goodies in the box. Things like the charger and cable are obviously present, but you also get a silicon case and some stickers, which is a nice touch. The Nord CE2 looks quite different compared to the CE, and by different, I mean a little more premium. In fact, it looks very similar to the Oppo Reno 7. It still has a plastic frame, but the back panel is now made of Corning Gorilla Glass 5, just like the display. However, one annoying side effect of this glossy finish is that it's a huge fingerprint magnet. There's still no trademark OnePlus alert slider on the CE models, but on the bright side, OnePlus has kept the headphone jack, so yay! The display is still a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel with a 90Hz refresh rate, but it's now HDR10 Plus certified. Now the Nord CE2 does have a very good in-hand feel and it is very well put together. As you can see, it's also pretty slim and light, which does make it very comfortable for everyday use. Looking at the OnePlus Nord CE2 and the Oppo Reno 7 side by side, you'll notice just how similar they are. Both are about the same size and weight and even the buttons and ports line up exactly. Even the camera modules on the back are almost identical. Now this shouldn't really come as a surprise considering OnePlus is now officially part of Oppo. The specs of the Nord CE2 have gotten better and you'll find that this phone has even more common with the Oppo Reno 7. Compared to the Nord CE, the new model features the more powerful MediaTek Dimensity 900 SoC and more than the performance improvement, I'm happy to see support for 8 5G bands in India compared to just the one band with the CE. Unlike the previous model, you only get two variants with 6GB or 8GB of RAM and both have 128GB of storage. The Nord CE2 also gets other upgrades such as expandable storage in the form of a dedicated microSD slot. There's Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2 and support for 65W fast charging compared to 30 watts with the previous model. Now this phone also misses out on things such as stereo speakers and an IP rating, but at this price, I think we can let this slide. By the way, if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon so you never miss a new video. Performance was never really an issue with the Nord CE and is certainly not a pain point with the CE2. You get Oxygen OS 11.3 out of the box and not 12 yet, which is the same version that the OnePlus 9RT was launched with. There are plenty of shortcuts and gestures to play with and the whole experience feels fluid and snappy. The Nord CE2 will get 2 years of Android updates and 3 years of security updates as promised by OnePlus. The in-display fingerprint sensor worked really well in my experience and even face recognition was quick. Videos in general looked very good on the Nord CE2's display. Colors were punchy with nice saturation and brightness was more than adequate. Now, I did notice a mild blue tint in certain parts of the display when viewing content with white backgrounds off-axis, but for most use cases, this wasn't really an issue. Besides videos, games also looked very good on this phone's display. I found the touch response to be pretty good even with fast-paced multiplayer games such as Call of Duty Mobile. Stereo speakers would have made the experience better, but you can simply plug in any wired earphones for lag-free audio. The cameras on the Nord CE2 are the same as the ones on the previous phone. There's a 64 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. At the front, you get a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Now, the camera app has changed and is now similar to what we've seen on Oppo phones. There's an AI scene enhancement toggle, which is best left disabled, in my opinion, as it tends to boost the colors to unrealistic levels. The Nord CE2 also gets the bokeh flare portrait filter from the Oppo Reno 7 series for stills and video, but the latter is restricted to just 720p. Photos taken during the day had good details and colors. Landscape shots had decent dynamic range and the exposure was handled well. Now, the ultra wide angle camera tended to boost colors a bit even with the AI turned off and textures weren't as sharp. The Nord CE2 does a great job with close-ups capturing rich detail and colors. The macro camera was just about usable under good light but don't expect anything more. The camera struggles to capture finer details in landscape shots in low light unless you use night mode. 
close-ups came out looking better without having to resort to a long exposure shot. Now, the selfie camera did a decent job in daylight and at night. Skin tones looked a bit off at times, especially in portrait mode, and faces had a bit of grain in low light, but overall, the results were not that bad. The OnePlus Nord CE2's video recording abilities are a bit crippled though, similar to the Reno 7, which again doesn't really surprise me considering how similar both these phones are. The CE2 can capture video at up to 4K 30fps, but without stabilization. Now, if you're going to be stationary while shooting, then it should be fine, or you'll have to drop the resolution to get smoother footage. Having AI enabled does help with exposure, but the quality of the video, especially in low light, tends to suffer. Battery life was very good in my experience. The OnePlus Nord CE2 has the same 4500mAh battery capacity as the Nord CE, but you can charge it a lot quicker thanks to the 65W SuperWook charger. Yeah, you heard me right, OnePlus has ditched the Warp Charge name and it's straight up gone with Oppo's branding. Now, With my typical use, I was easily getting a day and a half on one charge. The OnePlus Nord CE2 is a good update to the original and if you haven't already bought the previous model, I'd say the new one is worth buying. It's basically a lower priced Oppo Reno 7 without the spammy apps, which is not a bad deal. The CE2 offers a premium design, good performance, solid battery life with very fast charging and decent cameras for still photography. Video recording is not its strong suit, but other than that, it's really hard to complain. Now the Nord CE2 is by no means perfect and there are a couple of features that are still missing which other phones in this segment do offer. Now don't get me wrong, these aren't exactly deal breakers, but they would have been nice to have. For instance, if you're looking for dust and water resistance, then the Motorola Edge 20 Fusion is a very good phone. On the other hand, if you want really good sounding stereo speakers, then the Realme 9 Pro Plus is something you should be looking at. So that's been it for my review of the OnePlus Nord CE2. Let me know your thoughts about this smartphone in the comments below. And as always, for all things tech, log on to Gadgets360.com.